Welcome everybody to a video for the Long Library. This is going to be a commentary for Satoru's 37 minute and 50 second run. You can find this run at speedrun.com inside of the speedrun.com world record progression sheet. Uh, we will have a link to the video inside of the description for this video. Joining us for this particular commentary, we have Talik Zealot and Rom Scout. if you'd like to say hi guys. Hello. Hey, what's up? All right. So, uh, to preface this, our previous run was uh, Lucid Faya, who in that run we had shield dashing, or did we have shield dashing? We no, did not have not shield no, dashing. Not. <laughs> uh, but we did have the sequence break into Colosseum, and we did have the sequence break to pick up Silver Ring, I believe were the two major improvements on this, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Correct. And we had a lot of interesting weapon usage. Like a yeah, very he, he went through large uh, variety. Like pretty much half the, the weapons available in the game they can just pick up, it felt like. <laughs> so, uh, uh, some Holy Rod action. Yeah, Holy yeah. Rod. We had Luminous, I believe, also made an appearance. Claymore. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, be sure to check that out if you guys haven't. Uh, but to preface this for the story you run. Uh, I actually have a choice quote here, uh, kind of one of my favorites here. Oh, man. <laughs> from the site Pile of Secrets uh, at wiki.com, or wiki.com. And it's from the Hall of Fame, and it mentions Satoru, although has started late in the Castlevania gaming, uh, that's literally how it says it. I'm not, okay, so although <laughs> has started late in the Castlevania gaming, Satoru is one of the few few who can catch up with old school players and skill within a very short period of time can also perform certain maneuvers such as alicards symphony of the night shield backdashing legitly where most if not all people cannot perform or cannot perform as well the future of castlevania speedrunning and you're really <laughs> really gonna start to see how much of a stark difference like it, i mentioned in the previous video like there's this is the start of really kind of the more modern age of symphony of the night speed running uh did you kind of want to add anything either of you to that statement yeah i mean just to give some context around how the community was back then um i think you still had more people watching tasses than uh console speed runs at the time and so that was um it was more of a competitive aspect between those two communities it's a lot more collaborative now so that was uh, this was the first person on console to do what like people thought just wasn't possible like people did not think it was actually faster to shield dash because nobody could do it that well and they always just kept like stuttering <laughs> like you may see some new players do so yeah it, this is a pretty monumental run italic yeah, just the whole tone of the run that we're about to watch uh, is distinctly different and is going to set the stage for the modern era of uh, Southern speedrunning. It's still the the first one of the bunch, but it's definitely a stark shift in uh, in gameplay style. I, I think this was also the first run that um, people did not adhere to Twin Galaxies rules for running the game. Like, they didn't care about that at all. This was... Specifically for Speed Demo's archive, which, um, with Maiku Yama's leadership, started allowing uh, glitches to be used. All right. So, for those of you that are going to be following along uh, with the video provided, uh, the video itself is 44 minutes and 40 seconds in length. We will be starting the video at the seven-second mark that will be on the Castlevania Symphony of the Night title screen. Uh, and we will be starting our commentary here in five four three two one play so to watch this optimal menuing to name this file <laughs> but you know what he already lost some frames because he named it a instead of just pressing start to get a la carte so <laughs> yeah i was wondering about that <laughs> like i was just surprised he bothered pushing a thing at all but so Hey, maybe it was to verify it wasn't cheating. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so very much like the Lucid Fire Run, we still have running and jumping up the stairs to be able to get into Dracula Room. So not quite doing the elaborate starts that we're familiar with today at this point. 
I think the uh, Richter record at the time was still 7 minutes and 14 seconds, if I remember right. So, yeah, people in general just did not know how to play that character uh, even close to the level they can now. That probably helped with... That sick lag. Uh, ...playing that little <laughs> <laughs> safer. <laughs> so that is uh, the Holy Water Damage Stack glitch, which at this point was definitely well-known. Uh, Satori is showing a little flair there by doing the uppercut to get the screen corruption or whatever at the end of that uh doesn't use the holy water stack at the first form because if i remember right rom uh if you do the stack on the first form it lags so much that it's not nearly as worth it if i recall uh, right. no i think people just weren't consistent at it or they didn't try it enough honestly they maybe had a route up to that point uh with richter where they didn't grab enough hearts to throw three holy waters i think that was also a factor yeah. So yeah, this is actual shield death. <laughs> <laughs> Which had not been seen and very before good this one run. at that. It's not only actual shield dashing, but it's pretty quick. Yeah. And no, he's he's still one of the best, I think. Um it, and just keep another thing to keep in mind is that when runs came out back then, like people waited months, you know, even year over year in this case, to see this. Like Nobody saw the progression of him practicing these runs, so that pile of secrets just, like, you know, slobbering all over <laughs> his skill, like, that's because people thought these runs just popped out of nowhere. Like, these are just gods, right? They did kind of just pop out of nowhere, to be frank, though. Like, like you said, there was <laughs> only, like, you know, updates every few months or whatever, so... Yeah, so to everyone else's eyes, that's totally how it was. So, yeah, it's, um... Very strong, just yeah. basic backdashing here. Also, like um, we saw that a little bit with the Adam G run in the Lucid Fire, but like nice uh, <laughs> farming that extra heart there. Huh. I actually yeah, didn't know that he heart. did that, but I f I forgot that too. <laughs> yeah, some people even do that to this day for some reason. I suppose you don't That's lose really time on it, which is fair if you're uh, getting the sub eight anyway. Yeah, but this is PlayStation. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. This is 2008, so this was pretty much at the very beginning of Ustream and at the end of Stickum. So, yeah, live streaming was not really a thing for the masses like it is nowadays. So that is one of the reasons why speedrun is kind of kind of a different beast back then. I assume at least because I wasn't really around. Yeah, uh, I can think of like two speedrunners who streamed. Um, I wasn't a speedrunner yet, but uh let's see tiki I, I watched tiki do Mega Man x attempts he was still doing it in 2008 i think uh, let's see actually that's about it probably i'm interested <laughs> which strat uh he's going to be using for the slogger and guy bond fight because we still saw a I very primitive I wanna say strat he throws a i want to say he throws a knife and does tetra spirit yeah so he's going to do the old uh any percent yeah that i used to actually do when i first started running this game so oh he got hit <laughs> oh well the at least he can throw knives fast, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he had backups. <laughs> Interesting machine gun strat there for the end. But yeah, very interesting. And you can see the evolution. Like The Adam G and Lucid runs were still very primitive in the way they approached Slogger and Gaibon. Um, now we're starting to see a much greater refinement on how to fight that particular fight. We also see jump canceling on the fall down. I believe Lucid used that in a couple places i do not know if adam g did but uh yeah even things like those double hit uh kills on the bloody zombies very quickly like on these axe armors stuff like that yeah and i think that um if i'm remembering right uh satoru also used that as a stat check uh even back then to like whether he should reset or not because his, if he took three punches his strength is too low like, so he was even thinking about stats at that point. So we have a five-minute Maria time at this point. Uh, it'd be like a 450, actually, with the intro, but... Yeah, 450 say, I, is I think... pretty darn good. <laughs> with yeah, uh, no he... extra gear like the Alucard gear. He's, um... This, I think, is the first run that actually attempts any sort of clock rush, really, so... Do you happen to know if yeah. he was using PlayStation or PlayStation 2 during these initial He's, runs? He was using a PS2, um, 
and fast disk speed doesn't really work well with the game, so it was like I think a fat PS2 with. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a fat because it. I've seen PlayStation 2s be, uh, like act better with the game than this. Like the uh, the prologue lag was a little bit severe here. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, some of the slim models are pretty good about that. We notice he's actually trying to kill the uh, Diplos, which is interesting. I love this piece of tech, by the way. Just switching to short sword <laughs> just to kill these really quickly. I mean, it seems like a big time loss, but yeah. it honestly is not no, at all. I, well, people didn't think about it that way back then because, like, things just weren't optimized yet, right? Like, you just think, all right, what's the most efficient way for me to get through her consistently? That's that's how most strats were probably approached at the time. It's kind of shocking that only last year we found out that you can jump over them. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting thought, though, that he kills the Diplos. I want to say in Lucid and Adam G's runs, they jump over them, don't they? But uh, I guess, Satori, you felt like the... They killed him as well. Yeah. Oh, they did for both he, of them. He okay. probably felt like he could, he could kill them. He probably felt like he could kill them fast enough that he can shield dash sooner, and that gained him time. Right. So doppelganger, um, we had already seen the stopwatch tech uh, in the lucid fire run, so this should be all pretty standard. Oh, that load time though. <laughs> oh yeah. And remember the the load times do contribute to clock rushes. So playing on a solar system like this does just make getting a sub nine clock rush harder, which is what he was shooting for, I think. Mm. For sure. There's even some surprising differences that I didn't even know before I got on Xbox, like the cutscene skip at Moria for oh, some yeah, reason is that's quicker on Xbox. Slower on PlayStation, yeah. So this is an interesting way. I've always kind of liked the way Satoru does that when you don't have access to the Alucard sword. Um, he decides to shield dash and use the shield to hit the switch. Uh, not using yeah. the tech to enter the door to bring the elevator to the top. Um, so that's something that we can definitely take away was not a part of this uh this particular yeah. time I mean, piece, how I long guess. is with how long is loading took I, i'm not surprised if he maybe even tried to time it out at one point and was like eh not worth it <laughs> <laughs> so uses the wolf jump to pick up the garnet uh that's very very noticeable as well yeah i don't think anyone else before this had really used the wolf in their runs hardly at all I think like Adam think G grabbed Adam... it and didn't use it really. So we're noticing also that he does still have the short sword on, <laughs> or he uh, re-equipped it onto him, I should say. So using it the other way as well, and I mean that is a really good beginner strat. I feel like if you have trouble executing the initial spells, like you can't even do Hellfire or whatever, um, swapping to short sword is actually pretty good. <laughs> it's just a catch-all. Uh, method for dealing with the stone roses. No wolf, just pure mash power. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, with this route, you had to, you you not only mash now, but also later because of MP restrictions. So you're basically mashing for half an hour straight on this run. <laughs> <laughs> What a dark future for certain speedrunning. <laughs> and this is an interesting way that he loses quite a bit of time on. <laughs> that is... That is awful. I feel so We're bad. We're gonna discuss later why he <laughs> actually does this, but yeah, he forgoes the clock rush in order to get Alucard gear. Which is an interesting choice. Wow, Interestingly enough, he did that. make the sub-9 also. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but now he has to wait for it to open again. Yeah, that is uh, that's a massive time a loss. Essentially, a minute. And I, yeah, I, I don't know if he even thought about it that much. Like maybe he was so used to probably being above nine minutes anyway at that point that he didn't even think about it until afterwards that the statue is open. Well, another thought is if he's going to use that extra luck for anything in the future, then perhaps he overvalued the uh, drop that he'd get later. Oh yeah, I mean certainly that, that was definitely the thing did. at the forefront of his mind, but Yeah. 
But yeah, I guess like people, well, well people. It's probably just him because he was such a class above everyone else at that point. He probably wasn't thinking about the clock cycle being as important as we think about it now. Yeah, I wonder if those threads from that time even exist still, or perhaps I've seen some of them. Some of them do on SDA at least. Yeah. Or perhaps another thought is perhaps he felt like. So a lot of times you might do a different strat because you feel like there's so much more time on the table in other places. So that's another possibility is perhaps this was one of the first runs where he felt like everything else had gone very well. So that's true. the miss of the clock rush wasn't as big of an issue. So got the Onyx for some additional money, presumably. Um, so I guess he's buying a lot in the shop, like much more than we did when I started coming into the game a few years later. Using uh, one of the mini sword master manipulations. Actually, I think he used the faster one too on, <laughs> on that middle guy. Yeah, he made him both slide. So this is an interesting decision. So he goes to this before he goes to uh, Minotaur and Werewolf to pick up the shield rod. And Hellfire's through the, the night. That's awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to be interested to see what strategy he's going to choose for this. Because at this point, he doesn't have anything abusive with the shield rod. Um, so it's just uh, He might equip action. it as a weapon, though. Yeah, was, yeah, he might equip it as a weapon. Yeah, sure. we've mentioned that the shield rod is actually quite strong uh, per hit, and it has a really nice hitbox. You can also speed yeah, it up I... quite a bit with just jumping attacks. Which helps. Yeah, I think you can, if you do diagonal jump attacks, you can get double hits with them pretty easily. Oh, really? I actually didn't know that. He's going to punch uh, Minotaur at least. Oh, here it comes. There we go. <laughs> and, and the Owl Cart Mail, but not the other two. I guess it saves time for later, maybe. He always was thinking about menu optimization. <laughs> this would be something I'd never do. Equip the library card this early and potentially hit it before. <laughs> I suppose the other thought is you equip the mail there because if you miss um, your spell, yeah. or maybe he was seeing some sort of inconsistency with werewolf, where sometimes he would get hit, and that would yeah, cost him. Yeah, that some makes time. sense. Yeah, because he would get hit not that far back then. Yeah, he, he always does like putting the... library cards on really early, which is interesting. So we're getting life. Mana Prism, Library Card, and what was the last thing? Iron Shield, Iron Shield. presumably. Yeah. Uh, did not get the Jewel of Open on his first visit. I'm assuming he's going to get it on his second. Uh, I. He's I not going to need it. I don't think he's going to get it on this route. Yeah. We're going to see something interesting in this one. Hmm. An introduction to it. No spoilers. <laughs> oh man, I okay. I mean, I guess that's one way to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. So using the stopwatch to slow down Lesser Demon. Um, he's also using the moving backward to keep the swords in sight of Lesser Demon. Uh, I do not believe that. I think this is the first run that we see this. This in. is the first run yeah. that has Iron Shield at all. So yeah, he he was totally innovating all the tech for that. Iron Shield still used to this day when it comes to glitchless and still a very very strong combination. As far as time to effectiveness. Yeah, I never really thought about using the stopwatch there. That that was interesting to make it a little easier to um, keep him in position. All right, so probably Mana Prism on this one? Yeah. Yep. Pretty much the modern glitches stuff. So we're seeing Wing Smashes at least. We're going to see exactly what happens here. Um, I believe Lucid tried to do some Wing Smashes here and there, but didn't do the best job of them. Um, it seems like Satoru is also struggling. I can warp back in time. I wish I could and tell him that he's pressing jump plate. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people actually do that by by accident when they're 
Yeah, I, I feel it. like I still probably do that on a PlayStation controller, at least. <laughs> so, like, something else to mention. We mentioned uh, kind of how streaming was still very much in its infancy at this time. Uh, I would even go out on a limb to say that, like, so YouTube was a thing, but it definitely wasn't this mega video source that uh, it is today. I think today. it was, yeah, it was pre google Two years old. It. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, YouTube, YouTube was something you might know about, but it wasn't like you had enormous amounts of content being produced at any given time. And you would still have to have known about YouTube and known to look for certain things to be able to find what you wanted. And, I mean, it wasn't until many years later where speedrunning kind of caught on to uh, more mainstream media. Yes, I'm not convinced yet that he even knew Infinite Wing Smash was a thing because that has always been one of the most obvious spots to attempt it um, over the years. I think a lot of runners right after this started doing. So we have a very interesting version of the climb there. Um, probably just wanted to save some extra mana would be my thought. Uh, because you can just yeah. fly up there with the bat, but... Uh... Seems like wanted to save Wing Smash mana for this and save the mana to be able to deal with Karasamon would be my yeah, assumption. Yeah, because he definitely want a cast on Karasamon, and I think he's barely going to have the MP for that. Yeah, that looks like about the right amount. Yep. Using... That's good strength, too. Uh, only the single shield rod hit. Uh, something not really known too much here. Shield Rod spell with Iron Shield, I believe, is still impacted by strength. So, that is a nice yeah, strength so. total. Oh man, back when you he had to deal with these mana. idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that! Look at that hitbox just behind him hits him. It's the Brady Guide tech, by the way. <laughs> Brady Guide mentioning that you go to the first hallway with the infinitely spawning zombies and you just turn on your turbo button with the shield rod. And just oh like well, he on. is trying to he is trying to infinite wing smash. So we got yeah a little bit. Oh, huh. okay. So like it might have just been that the budgeting of mana wasn't as tight at that time. Yeah, yeah, because he did barely have enough the way he was doing clock tower to cast on cross months. So that makes sense. And now interesting stuff is beginning yeah. to happen. I mean, I know why he's coming here. I don't know if anyone else does. <laughs> oh, I've seen the room before. <laughs> oh, zombie Making history, strong. boys. I mean, think about if you were watching this run at the time, and the last speed run you had a clue about for this was Lucid Fires. Like, you'd be so confused right now. <laughs> Like, where is he going? <laughs> Why does he want this? Okay, I'm glad he didn't Definitely. lag the game by wing smashing yeah. through those, because if you do that, all of those glasses break, and it probably adds, like, two extra seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious original hardware speed running. Okay, one more left. And he did break the tunnel at the start. So if you haven't picked it up yet, uh, good old Satoru is going to be picking up both of the additional wolf relics. Uh, these are integral to doing a number of sequence breaks inside of the game. Well, it makes it quite a bit pretty, easier to do other ones. Pr pretty much one sequence break, but it looks really cool otherwise in a couple of spots. Yeah. Um, this is also probably not him attempting the infinite wing smash. This is actually to conserve mana as well, I'm guessing. Um, I yeah, figured like he'd it. be doing more, like, back dashes in between the bats, but... You notice we're not... probably just because there's so many enemies. You notice we're not seeing back kicking as much either, which is another notable yeah. thing. All right, here we wow, go. He must the have, fun starts. He must have ran into <laughs> some bad times with that owl if he decided to take time out to kill it. <laughs> Well, he uh, follows you up there. Oh, God. Oh, God. Nice. <laughs> Man, then look how fast he goes after that. Italic is now a skeleton. 
<laughs> well, this is the coolest part. Yeah. Oh, never mind. He didn't do the cool strat. <laughs> so, like, very, very fast to be able to get back to where you're going. So, like, that makes up at least part of this detour. But uh, we're going to see what Well, you dividends... call it a detour, but compared to getting everything normally, I wouldn't really call it that. Well, we're going to see the dividends <laughs> that this strategy pays off fairly soon. So, yeah. So it is noteworthy that mm -hmm. this strategy will not allow him to get access to gravity boots. So his vertical movement is going to be rather poor uh, throughout the rest of the run. However, we are going to uh, oh. we're going to see one of the first. Do you have ages. to start from the back ledge? Yeah, you have to start back there. And there goes Richter. So no silver ring, no gold ring. Uh, one of the first incarnations of the Richter skip. And that's performed in an actual run. So, Yeah. Um, they did know about the floor clip version at that point, but it was thought to be TAS only because just of how hard it was and nobody had setups or anything. So this was the next best thing. <laughs> so the wolf clips were a pretty, pretty early on known uh, glitch. I didn't actually know uh, about that. Yeah, at least by the... Like, again, the first two runs you, you guys watched, um, they didn't allow glitches because they are trying to follow Twin Galaxy rules in addition to SDA, and then um, now they knew about the glitches, but I think the sword card, which they knew you could use to glitch the shop, they thought was too big of a detour to go get because they didn't know you could go through the statue, and... Um, like I said, the wolf clips they thought were TAS only, just because it was like really hard. <laughs> was Arucado's uh, TAS out by now? Uh, he may have had one out by now. Yeah, yeah. No, he had like that. Uh, the map collection TASs by that point, I think. I like how these guys are just oh, overlooking that. Uh, Satoru, you missed the initial strategy for the bet, but actually had a really good backup strategy. <laughs> yeah, that was an amazing backup. <laughs> I've <laughs> not seen that. Just like immediately shifts over if, to a secondary strat and actually does a really good job with it. Uh, notice yeah. the uh, owl cart armor came on after that. <laughs> well, I mean, he's got to get the TNT drop off of these rock knights, right? Or these bomb knights. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a pretty precise uh, position for that wing smash to make it over um, compared to a lot of other things he's trying in this run. So, stopwatch? Yeah, stopwatch. So, this particular strategy, uh, using the stopwatch in this room for, like, all bosses wouldn't be kind of circumvented until relatively recently. Later on, you would get the gravity boots to make that a much uh, less dangerous room and much quicker. But uh, using the stopwatch, very, very valuable in that place. Taking the detour, I to pick up the dragon helm dragon realm yeah, the is... dragon helm special ability of uh reducing enemies defense by half definitely affects uh the shield rod spell with the iron shield so it's going to help the damage output by a lot and i mean there you're seeing kind of one of the casualties of not having the gravity boots is you just have to take quite a bit of time whenever you're doing anything that ascends a fairly long distance And I mean, some of these jumps are actually, like, those jumps going through reverse are actually kind <laughs> of tricky to some extent. That jack of bones looked at him funny, I guess. <laughs> Interesting strat to do this room. I suppose yeah. he maybe felt like he was off timing on part of that, so he was just like, I'll just kill him off. Either that or maybe that is his strat, is to kill off those particular ones that are blocking his path. So once again... Looking at this old chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> the ye old Chris now, farm. We, we're Is not he... going to get an Adam G, unfortunately. Oh, man. No one. <laughs> He's drop. already behind that pace. <laughs> Bad run. Reset. 
I'm timing from here, by the way. <laughs> Just to see how long this takes. So yeah, that is why he... He valued this drop so much uh, that he wasted the clock cycle to get the Alucard armor for it. <laughs> Which is an interesting thing for him to make the decision on, because, I mean, he does have the Iron Shield. Maybe this was just something that was really just ingrained in his thought process at this time. Yeah, so he, I mean... The Iron Shield and Shield Rod are it, extremely powerful, even going into the second castle. Yeah, I mean, think about, like, to communicate back then, runners had to use the, the forums, right? So the only communication you're getting is, like, described by words, and you have no video reference of anything. Like, it I totally makes sense if you just start thinking, okay, this is the optimal route, and I have to do it because there's nothing showing me otherwise. <laughs> so would you happen to know if there was a specific forum for this, or was this, like, BBSs, or were people really pushing the SDA forums at this time? Like, um, there, Most of the stuff in this run was discussed on the sda forms um, any people i, I think particular? lucid faya's run also well i think lucid faya actually talked in that thread um other people i wouldn't remember the names offhand but it was a very different group of soten runners who i don't think did timed attempts that much they more just were like strat finding mm. So even back then, to some extent, speedrunning was still a collective effort, but because of the means of communication they had at the time, it was much more difficult to actually optimize quickly and efficiently. Yeah, and again, it was a little more competitive between tassers and console speedrunners, um, because especially like with the early days of YouTube, people just got confused um, between them. So that took uh, like two and a half minutes, by the way. Yeah, definitely not super worth it in the grand scheme of things, but again... Still better than ROM luck. Oh, you haven't seen ROM's latest run. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to. I've seen him trying to farm Flamberg. <laughs> that's good enough. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to see nice old Cuisinart on the creature here. You can tell he's used the Chrysogrim before uh, quite a bit are and you, has actually practiced doing this. Are you, like, are you for real? <laughs> you can tell he's practiced pressing the attack oh, yeah. button. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, no, I'm, I'm saying this because I felt like uh, when watching, uh, maybe I might be wrong on this, Adam G's run, he felt a little less confident in using it. Like he just was like a little more, more hesitant on... Um, just flat out mauling things with it. Yeah, he wasn't as sense. confident in the DPS race, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah, it turns out when you hit, like, what? Like, six times a swing or something at high damage? You do a lot of damage! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It packs a wall, for sure. Clearly has played this game before. He knew to dodge the trap by jumping <laughs> that's going to be the new well, thing whenever dude, rob's on commentary stop. let's yeah. just john mad and everything <laughs> <laughs> well he's definitely used the bat a lot he knows about wing <laughs> smash i was surprised he didn't turn around and kill the nova skeleton i would have <laughs> those things are scary okay it does take the side path to be able to get a save to restore mana but he doesn't end up saving because he's done that previously. So, yeah, we ran yeah, into a uh, he, odd. He, we ran into an oh, odd sorry. anomaly with the uh, lucid fire run that neither of us had seen. Where it's like if you don't have the memory card in, then like weird things happen. Oh on yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a funny part. I, he even put that in his notes if you read those, like why he did that. It was pretty interesting. Um. But yeah, uh, Satori definitely timed out the two paths here you can take. Like, I think um, you may have seen in Adam G's run that he went on the right side, but here he decided that even flying straight up his bat um, 
it was faster than double jumping up the other side. And he was correct, but yeah, that definitely took a little bit of research to find out, I'm sure. Because it's like a fairly close race between those two. Well, at some point you also have to concede for execution versus ease of use yeah. is another big thing. Um, one of the big things that people forget about when discussing like top tiers and fighting games, um, they look at all the tools available to people and such. But um, one of the ones that a lot of people forget is ease of use is a big thing as well. And that holds true for speed running, I feel like, as well. Um, if something's only a couple seconds faster, but the risk of failing it is much greater, then you might not want to do it unless you're really, really pushing the envelope. Oh yeah, Death's dead now too. <laughs> Shocking fight. Yeah, with this weapon. <laughs> That's gonna be it for for bosses having a powerful weapon like this. Even though nowadays we still use the shield rod spell for those, and it pretty much kills them as quickly. These bats jerks even with the chrysogram. <laughs> Yeah, having only leapstone for these sections makes the movement pretty awkward and uh, difficult to perform in a quick manner. It does make it a little easier to perform optimally in comparison, though. Yeah. Even to this day, these bathrooms after death are pretty tricky to do. Oh, oh man, man. <laughs> sweet. More puppy. <laughs> very disappointed this is actually that. Pretty uh, comparable. Very disappointed to, uh, he didn't Infant turn Link's into match. that at all during any of those. Yeah, I, I was wondering that on every single one of these so far. I guess it was just something he didn't think about or really mess with yet was canceling out the crash at the end and having the momentum stick with that. It might not have mattered too I mean, much he in also, certain places as well. Yeah, he also didn't know about bat kicking clearly, which is along the same principle. So, yeah, it's probably just something that hadn't really been explored yet. And I mean, that's a building process, right? Whenever doing any type of speed run. Well, he just did it there. Oh, he did it. So. <laughs> well, we can shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> so that raises more questions then, because does that mean that he was aware of bat kick and just decided not to use it that much? Or, I mean, I guess we'll find I, out later on. Yeah, I don't know. I have a lot more questions now, certainly. <laughs> You're just going to actually call up Sotari. Hey, in your run that was like 10 years old... <laughs> I'm I'm tweeting him right Stop now. Stop <laughs> doing this. <laughs> oh man, this is This is happening, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, it really is a building process uh just figuring out what things work. Uh I still run yeah. into people constantly that ask the question and I'm positive you guys do as well where they're like, "How did somebody figure this stuff out?" And it really is a building process. Like, oh, yeah. once you find Bat Dash, then you're like, huh. It's whenever you're moving to the side, and then maybe you turn into it after Wolf or something because you want to fly up, and then you see that it moves there. And then all of a sudden, you're applying that to other principles where horizontal movement uh, can apply to the Bat. You know, there, There's also yeah. something else I feel. I, I don't know if you mentioned this in the first two runs, but... There was no specific timer program that people used yet. W split didn't exist. Live split didn't exist. If people wanted to use a stopwatch, maybe they did, but I'm not even sure they did that. So comparing things and like measuring exactly how much time they took and even just timing runs normally was pretty uncommon. Like You probably looked at the DVD after if you hadn't made too many mistakes and then just like see, or VHS I guess sometimes, and see what the time ended up being. Rom Scout confirms that Satori was literally counting out loud during this run. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how everyone else did it, but yeah, I, I don't think... Um... 
until after CGDQ, I had started using a timer program during streams. <laughs> I feel like you're probably correct. If you were timing strats, you either use stopwatch, or I think probably more likely would be you do a bunch of attempts on like a tape and then just kind of compare your best ones. Yeah. I don't know if Sutton was really that uh, science heavy at that point, but um, I would assume that there were speed runs that were kind of at that level at that time. Certainly the glitch hunting community was pretty active at this point by now. And I mean, we are well on our way to wrapping up this run, by the way. <laughs> I know. It's... Especially with Chrysogram, where <laughs> how many swipes is Dracula gonna get in? <laughs> Dragon mm -hmm. Helm and Chrysogram. <laughs> it's like, why did I even give this to a Shmoo? <laughs> it doesn't have any arms. It can't even use it. <laughs> it's fine. It, it got wrong. Two fifty five, probably. Is this what? Does it do two fifty five damage? The Chrysogram. No. Oh, no, not not even It might as well, it. though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it's not equivalent to the Alucard shield spell. Yeah, so the, the Dragon Helm still helps. Would you happen to know if you can do Chrysogram dashing? Yes, yeah. you can. So that's kind of interesting that that was foregone. But I guess it makes sense since you know your well, hands are in a shield, certain position. Shield's still gonna be yeah, yeah. Shield's still gonna be faster because the like I, well, I guess it should be equivalent because neither really has a startup on the animation. I think there's just a limit on the Chrysogram showing up right. if you mash it, whereas there's not on the shield. So wrapping up the last little bit of this, we got big old Drac Daddy. Is he gonna wait for him to come down to the bottom? Looks like it. Or will he he's gonna jump up to meet him. So like that is an yeah, optimization on the fight. Close. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh What's please that? don't die. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I know you don't, but please don't die for this. <laughs> <laughs> Two swipes. All right. <laughs> so Probably could have done one swipe if he didn't get hit, too. It's very, very this interesting. This is pretty powerful. Very, very interesting kind of foray into the new stuff. So um, it's kind of recap uh, if you guys want to take this piece by piece. What were some of the new things that we saw introduced inside of this run? Well, obviously the big ones are going to be Shield Dash and Richter Skip. Um, like, those had never really been seen at, uh, at least for Shield Dash at that level, and for Richter Skip, probably not at all on SDA before that. Um, and then... We also saw the use of the Shield Rod spell for yeah, combat. That, that makes a comeback quite a bit. And uh, oh, yeah. you just using... Uh, momentum tricks like with bat with the wolf like using the the slope jumps with the wolf that none of that had really been a thing yet but um this was kind of the first foray into using the transformations to be faster than just shield dashing and jumping everywhere we also had another really big thing introduced besides the richter skip which is a sub nine clock rush uh he didn't make use of it but that was definitely on the table and available at this point. People were actually executing up to that point to where uh, Satoru could have entered the Colosseum early had he opted to do so. Yeah, and I'm sure that came up later, like right when this run was posted. I'm sure a lot of people brought that up to him. So that's more than a cycle faster than before. We also saw the elimination, I mean, you mentioned the Richter skip, but also the elimination of having to detour for the rings is another noteworthy thing. That means getting rid of Succubus, that means getting rid of any invincibility you would need to get to Maria. Yep. He Cut collected out. additional money for shopping. I mean, if he had not, like, what, two and a half minutes? So, 
he would have had a sub 35 on this run actually no he probably would have had a sub 34 in this run if he had just gone with the clock rush and done a standard like somewhat optimized route from there so that like execution wise this run was actually pretty good it's just he had the routing errors that really uh brought it closer to lucid Faya's run than it should have been i think another thing to note is we also saw a bigger push for using the invincibility frames on spells a much tighter minotaur werewolf fight a much tighter slogger gaibon fight A much bigger uh, emphasis on mana routing, I feel like, as well, than the previous runs. Yeah, he was using the save rooms as well to refill mana consistently. So, after this one, we're going to have another revisit to Satorio, because he's going to have another uh, entry on this list after this one. Um, any kind of comments uh, from either of you regarding this run or kind of like what we're seeing, kind of this shift uh, now that Satoru has kind of made his mark on Soten speedrunning? I mean, I would say this is kind of the first glimpse at the more modern era of Soten speedrunning, and we're going to see a lot of more optimizations and introduction of new glitches. So it's going to become much more uh heavy when it comes to execution yeah and uh, it, the times that are gonna become interesting that that actually um brings up an interesting uh point too because the increased execution was so much harder than anything that had been done to that point that it was actually seen as like a harder barrier of entry to running the game like a lot of people were turned off i remember this at least from the forums that a lot of people are like turned off from even bothering trying to compete because like they can't shield dash that fast and you know it's the flashiest thing in the run so nobody thinks that like anything else matters compared to that right so, as a point of order yeah. regarding the shield dashing uh i believe satoru was also proof called correct and you can still see that video online to this day where he explains how he shield dashes and shows himself doing it in real time because yep. it's like <laughs> you know no turbo controller no tricks just you know trying things out and figuring out what worked for him and it's something that still works out for a lot of people to this day and yeah when it comes to how difficult it makes to run we have to consider that in those early days there were much fewer optimized strats other than shield dashing so shield dashing was actually more important than than it is now um, so I can definitely see how, how it can be daunting for new people to to tackle the run. It's also one of those things where you see in you can shield dash arbitrarily fast, and it does gain you time. But as we have found out far later, it really is less important the speed at which you shield dash and just the consistency. And that might have been one of the big indicators to other people as well, as they were just like, I can't go this fast. <laughs> When it's like, it wasn't about the speed, it was just making sure you didn't stop. It's still, yeah, people still make the mistake of thinking like that, for sure. Okay, I mean, any of us uh, have any closing thoughts on this run? Uh, I wish Satoru would uh, play again, but I, I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, he still has the skill. If you saw, um, he did a PSP run last year for HDQ submissions. Like, his shield dashing's still there. Like, his, most of his wing smashing execution's still on point. Like, yeah, he come back whenever he wants, probably. Uh, Talik, yourself? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, his, when we get to his 30 minute run, People are gonna see like why exactly it's gonna be exciting to to see him play again. People are gonna but see yeah. also why if you know if you actually know Soten speedrunning, you know that even though Satoru doesn't have like a sub seventeen time or whatever, you still know he's a really, really good player. Um 
But anyway, I say that's going to wrap it up for this particular commentary. This has been Turbo Dog with Talik Zealot and Rom Scout doing commentary for the Satori U run of Symphony of the Night. Thank you guys for watching. As mentioned, you can catch this on the Long Library Discord. We will be putting the link to the video itself in the description for Satori U's run. You can always reference the speedrun.com boards inside of the forums under the World Record Progression thread to be able to find it there as well. But uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll be back with another one of these videos soon enough.